Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video and I hope you're all doing well. Now, as you can tell by the title of the video, in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining to you how I became an airline pilot at just 21. Now, I know a lot of you who watch my channel are aspiring pilots, some of you already are, so probably have similar stories to mine. But if you are an aspiring pilot, maybe my story can give you a guide on which path to take and how you can become an airline pilot yourself. Or you'll maybe just don't want to be a pilot and you're just clicking on the video because you're curious. I mean, that's always a possibility as well. So for me, like many other airline pilots, I pretty much knew as soon as I was born that I was going to be an airline pilot. When people ask, I normally say I was around four when I said I was going to be an airline pilot. But to be honest, I feel like I was born and I, it was just destiny for me. And you know, from a young age, I was always really into maths and physics and I really enjoy just the mechanical side of maths and you know and the physics of understanding why things did what they did and that was always interesting to me but that being said not interesting to every pilot but for me it was always an interest and that basically continued for my whole school career in the end I ended up taking them as my final subjects when I was 18 for my A-levels in England but that's skipping forward a bit so coming back to my childhood yeah I was just obsessed with planes as a kid and I always said I wanted to be a pilot, it was just a dream of mine. Now as I got older and that passion just grew stronger, in the end I managed to convince my parents to give me a trial flight when I was 12. And I really recommend that for any of you aspiring pilots, just to make sure this is something you really really want to do. Go to your local airfield and get a trial flight and for me, as if you really want to be a pilot, I'm sure it will be the exact same for you. but. That experience is life-changing. It's probably a highlight of my childhood was having that first time in light aircraft. I just couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable. For me, it was my first time being in a light aircraft and the instructor was even really nice, let me hand fly a little bit. To be honest, I really pretty much only did straight and level, a few turns, a bit of climbing and descending. But for me, 12 years old, I felt like a pilot. It was the first time I felt like, wow, I'm a pilot. But obviously, little did I know that was just the beginning. Also, it was my first taste of aerobatics. The, uh, the instructor asked if I liked roller coasters and I was like, yeah, for sure. And he was like, do you want to do aerobatics? I was like, uh, I'm not really sure what to expect. And he was just like, you'll love it. And I did, that was fair to say. When I was 13, I went to my secondary school and that's when I joined the Air Cadets. Basically, the Air Cadets is something we have in England. It's sort of, you're, you're doing military activities and including that, we got to learn a bit about planes. And every now and then, we got to head down to the local RAF base where one of the RAF pilots would take us up flying in a grob tutor. Again, doing some crazy aerobatics. Some of them were absolutely nuts. But again, this was more chance for me to get my hands on the plane and get flying. And I absolutely loved it. You know, every chance I could get in the plane, I was taking it. And I did that from 13 all the way up to 17. So for you younger guys, if you do have the chance to get into the Air Cadets, I really recommend it. At least go give it a go. You don't have to do it for your, your whole childhood, but if you're about 12, 13, you can think about joining one, looking around to see if there is one, and I highly recommend it. It was brilliant fun for me. Also in that time, the summer where I turned 16, I went back to the local airfield where I originally learned how to fly, and I did some work experience there. I think I only did the week, and to be honest, I think I should have done more. But I did a week at my local airfield, working for one of the flight schools there. Pretty much, I just got to clean the planes, do a bit of admin on the computers, and every now and then they would take me flying and let me refuel the planes, which I absolutely loved, so I can't complain. But not only that, it does look really good on a CV, and when you go to airlines and show them that sort of thing, it really does impress them, so really recommend that. Now, once I got to 18, this is sort of where it all changes. This is now where you finish school and there's a number of routes you can take. Now, as most of you know, there's pretty much two main ways you can go, integrated or modular. And as it's my story today, I'm just gonna tell you the way I did it. But by no means is this the best way for you. So make sure you do your research before jumping to any conclusions. Don't just think that my way is the only way. There are a few different paths you can take. And each path does have benefits and negatives. So definitely do your research before you jump into it. 
However, once I was 18, I had the big decision of, do I go straight to flight school or do I go to university first? And for me, I definitely think I made the right decision. Whilst it was hard because a lot of my friends were going to university, I just don't think it was the right decision for me. If I spent three years after university doing a degree I didn't really want to do, I just think it would have been a waste of a lot of money and a long three years. And all I would have wanted to do is fly. So that's what I did. I had to start researching flight schools and researching the path that I wanted to take. Now, the best way I did this, and I seriously recommend to any aspiring pilot you do this, and it's almost a must, go visit Pilot Careers Live. This is where every flight school gets to present to you, show you their best, and you get to talk to them, talk to airlines, talk to current pilots, current students, and speak to different schools. This is really where you get to learn a lot about each flight school and find, try and find which one is best for you. Once you have got a handful of them, I had about three or four on my list, I seriously recommend going to open days. Now, th these are so good. These are where the, the flight schools will show you their best. They will be on their best presentation and that's where you can really set them apart. If, if that's what they're gonna act like and present to you as on their very best day, Think how they will present yourself on the whole 18 months. If they're not impressive then, they won't be impressive and they won't be the right flight school for you. You should go to that flight school, be absolutely blown away and just almost know as soon as you walk in the door that this is the flight school for me. And whilst I went to a few, there was one that really stood out to me. By no means because I went to it, was it the best one? Just for me, at the time, I believed and still believe to this day that I made the right choice for myself. And I ended up going to Leading Edge Aviation. But make sure you do your research into all the flight schools. Go visit them all so you can find the best one for you. After finishing school, I had about six months between starting at Leading Edge Aviation and finishing school. And in that six months, I did a few things and there's also some things that Looking in hindsight, I wish I did differently. And that's why I wanna make this video so I can share that with you. Now, firstly, I worked. I saved up money for flight school and that is something you should definitely do. Flight school's not cheap, so make sure you save up as much as possible. Now, one thing I did, and this was probably an amazing decision. I tell this story in all of my interviews and it seems to impress interviewers and it shows initiative. It just It's just a great story and I suggest you do something similar. Essentially what I did was through a few connections, I managed to get a sit down interview with the CEO of Air Malta. Now, that was amazing. I got to speak to someone so high up in the aviation industry. I got to sit with him face to face and we had a good half an hour chat and he just gave me so much advice. This is where I also first learned about the pilot core competencies. And these are things that you need to develop all throughout your aviation career and really what makes a great pilot. Now, being 18 and fresh out of school, I didn't really have a lot of opportunity to develop my own core competencies. And I knew that if I went for my interview as I was today and I, they wanted me to give examples of the, those sort of competencies, I wouldn't have many things to go off of. So I needed to find ways to develop my core competencies. So what I did at the end of the interview was ask the CEO if he would be willing to let me work at Air Malta. Now, unfortunately, he said no, but what he did offer me was two weeks work experience, which in my opinion was just as valuable whilst it was only temporary and it was only short term. It was amazing. So I worked for two weeks at Air Malta in operations where I, I learned so much about an airline the knowledge I consumed in that two weeks was insane. There were pilots coming in and out, so I got to speak to them, pick their brains about questions of what I should do, and I just learned so much. That brings me on to another point of try talk to pilots. I learned so much by talking to pilots, and but yeah, those two weeks at Air Malta were amazing for me, and when they asked me for, show me a time where you worked within a team, and I could bring up times of teamwork, which we used in the operations department at Air Malta, it really made me stand out. But apart from those two weeks in Malta, majority of my time was simply working and saving up money. And I was just doing admin in an office. It wasn't anything glamorous. And that's something I wish I changed. And now I'm not sure why I didn't at the time, but looking back at it, if you have the opportunity, 
I 1000% recommend going into an aviation job. Now, that doesn't matter what it is. It can be cabin crew, which is probably top of the list. If you can get a cabin crew job before you fly, before you start flight school, it's gonna make you stand out at your flight school interview. It's gonna make you stand out at your airline interviews afterwards. I just really recommend doing cabin crew if you can. You'll learn so much about airline operations. You'll get to speak to pilots. You'll learn so much. But if that's not for you, operations works great as well, or crewing, scheduling, anything you can do within an airline is great experience. And that's what I really wish, if I could go back and do it again, I did in those six months. But the route I took, working an admin job, just saving up money purely, and also those two weeks work experience, which were so valuable to me. Now I've gone over my interview in detail in another video. I'm gonna leave that link down in the description so you can check it out after this one if you wanna learn a bit more about the interview process. But luckily I passed my interview, which I was thrilled with, and shortly after, just before I started, COVID hit, which was gut-wrenching. I mean, it was, it was awful because I didn't know what I was gonna do. I'd already put my deposit on my flight school. I, I was so lost. I thought I would should have gone to university. My whole flying was delayed. But in the end, this is where for me, Leading Edge Aviation was by far the best choice for me at the time because while every other flight school stopped working completely, Leading Edge kept going. We did basically ground school from home for the first half. So my Leading Edge Aviation journey and my flight school journey began at home in my bedroom learning because because of COVID, we were doing all the online learning on Teams. And the first time I met any of my course was when we were going in for our exams. Luckily, I passed my first set of exams completely fine. Then I sat the second seven set of exams. That's a tongue twister. But again, I finished ground school and that took about six months. I started in May 2020, finished November 2020. And I worked so hard in these six months and I cannot explain to you how hard you have to work and this is where you really really have to be passionate about being a pilot I was working 12 hour days and I'm not saying I was awake for 12 hours I was awake more because I had to eat and get ready in the morning I was revising for 12 hours a day just because I just didn't want to do anything else all I wanted to do was do well in these exams these can be the difference between getting your first job and not, and I just wanted to give my 1,000% into them. I did extremely well. I came away with a 93% average across the 14 exams with first-time passes in all my subjects. And for sure, that's not the best score anyone has got. People have got way higher, and fair play to them, but that was the best that I think I could have done, and that's the most important thing. As long as you give your 100% and you work as hard as you can, there is nothing more you can do. So that's what I did, and I'm really happy with how hard I worked and the result I came away with. Next up was the fun part, which was flight training. So we start on the single engine. We did that for a while. I did twin engine flying, and if you're new to the channel, just click on my videos on my page and scroll down. You have flight school start to finish. You can watch all my flights pretty much. I mean, not all of them, but a good handful you can really get a good taste of what flight school was like i'm sure many of you have seen them already so i don't need to explain what i got up to on my flying but if you are interested to see what i was doing while flying just go have a scroll on the channel and you'll see loads of videos that then finished with uprt upset prevention and recovery training and my aps mcc my aps mcc is essentially was done in an a320 and was the closest thing i got to being an airline pilot. Whilst it's all in a simulator, you really got to get the taste of what your life could be like in the very near future. APS MCC was probably a highlight of my training. I really enjoyed it. Eventually, I finished flight training and I finished the end of March, 2023. Once that was finished, the airline industry was pr still pretty sore from COVID. I'm glad to say today, it's looking 10 times better. It is so much quicker to get a job than it was back then. Still hard, still not how it used to be before COVID, but by all means very possible now to get one pretty quickly, within a few months for sure. However, at the time, options were very limited for me. 
So I had to do something to fill in the gap and this was when I learned from my previous mistake of not doing anything in the six months before I started flight school and I knew I had to get a job within the aviation industry. Now I had a few options on my list, cabin crew was there, not really suited for me but it was a really good option and one I still highly recommend for any of you. Operations was another option. Ground handling was an option within an airport. There are definitely a few options out there, but in the end, I actually went to work for my current flight school in marketing, which allowed me to stay within the aviation industry, speak to students, and, and when it came to my interviews, I was able to use the resources at Leading Edge from the instructors to help me with my exams. And that was such a huge bonus of still working at the company. I had all the resources available for my interview. As well as that, again, it looks so good on a CV to finish flight training and then the company rehire you because clearly they must have liked you after getting to know you for nearly two years. And I worked there and in that time, there were a few opportunities, not a lot. But in the end, I was applying to anything and everything. And I got so lucky with an opportunity, honestly think is still one of the best opportunities out there that I could have grabbed at the time. And by no means is it the best job perfect for everyone, definitely not. But for me and what I wanted, I mean, I wasn't very picky at the time. As long as I was flying for an airline, I was pretty happy. Whether that had been on a small plane, a large plane, if I was flying and getting paid to do so, I would have been happy. But I managed to land an A320 commercial airline job, which is what I'm currently doing today and absolutely in love with. I started my type rating on the A320 November 2023. So between March 2023 and finishing flight school to November 2023, where I started, not too much of the gap. I had my interview end of September, which was really hard. I'm so glad I passed it though. And I, again, the help from the flight school and having worked there really did help. But I passed my interview and started my tight rating in November, 2023. The first of which was ground school. This was essentially a lot of home learning. For a tight rating, it's not like flight school where you're sitting in classrooms a lot, learning from the instructors. For tight rating, the large majority of it is just here is the content go and learn it which is exactly what i did i learned it inside and out back to front as much as i could and i managed to pass my ground school exam with a hundred percent so i guess i couldn't have done much more and then it was time for the simulators again i've made another video of a week in the life of a type rating student which shows all my week of simulators in depth I did that for just over a month. I wanna say about five or six weeks of simulators. But if you wanna check out in detail what I got up to in those simulators, I was in Stockholm for the large majority of it. So go check the video out. I'll leave another link in the description so you can go have a look at that as well. But once the simulators are complete, it's time for base training. And this is the first time I flew an AT20 real life. It had no passengers on, just students, but we went and did six touch and goes in an A320. I mean, just still saying it out loud is bizarre. I mean, touch and goes in an A320. That is just sort of unheard of, isn't it? It, it was a, the best experience of my life. But once we completed base training, it was time for line training. And unlike base training, this means we have passengers and we are operating as normal airline pilots. I was my first time flying passengers on an A320, 180 seats on board. I mean, it was surreal. And I really felt like I'd achieved everything I worked for. And this is pretty much the stage I'm up to now. Now, when you see this video, the next following week, I should have completed line training, at which point I am released a full-on normal airline pilot just doing normal airline pilot operations and duties and living my dream. But as of today, I'm still just finishing off my line training. This is essentially completely normal flying. It is to a passenger, you have no idea line training is even going on. For you, it is a normal flight completely. However, for us airline pilots, essentially, it's just a cadet sitting with a line training captain, someone with a bit more experience who can 
teach whilst also flying. In the cruise, we get discussion items. We're going in detail about different operations and they're really testing your knowledge that you learn from the type rating. But to be honest, it has gone really well so far. For me, I'm not sure how it is at every airline. However, on the 8020 at the company I'm at, my line training is 66 sectors, followed by a line check on the 67th and 68th, which I should have next week. So fingers crossed for that, but hopefully it will be all okay. Speaking of line training, you'll be glad to hear that coming out in the near future. I do have recorded, not edited yet, but I will get on that, a week in the life of a line training student. So you guys could get to see pretty much what I got up to in the week of a line training student. So I know you'll like it. Make sure you stay tuned for that one. And that is essentially where I am today at just 21 and how I became an airline pilot at 21. Now, I hope I went into enough detail about my journey and I, you guys got a great insight of ideas for yourself and how you can do it. And of course, if you have absolutely any questions, leave a comment. I will do my very best to respond to as many as possible. I wanna help you guys. I know you guys can do it and I wish I had that extra person I could just fire loads of questions at who's been there and done it. Feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you guys out. And that for me is really what this YouTube channel is all about. Helping you guys, inspiring, educating, just helping you guys get to the dream that I know we all share. Because I can tell you now from someone who's done it, it feels amazing. And it is definitely worth all the hard work. And if this content is something you'll enjoy and you want to check out all the videos coming out in the future from this airline pilot, make sure you subscribe, like the video so I know you enjoyed it and found it helpful. And if you did enjoy and you want a bit more information, I've also made this video, which is how to become a commercial pilot. It goes a bit more into detail about the different ways you can get there. Something I'm sure a lot of you would find helpful. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.